Welcome to part one of my hunter example run. Uh, what is an example run, you might ask? Well, this is basically a strategy guide for hunter because as far as I can tell, nobody has really made like an in-depth strategy guide for hunter uh, on like the subreddit or on YouTube or really anywhere. Maybe I'm missing it. But anyway, uh, an example run specifically is like, so I did this run not trying to be too flashy with anything, not using any like really like what I consider advanced movement or anything like that. And kind of just role playing it as if I'm not that experienced with Hunter uh, and leaving all of my deaths and gory moments in as I go, uh, just to show people that you can beat Hunter mode, which I know does seem daunting without being too flashy or skilled or even really getting in too much with combat or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to go through what I think is more or less the easiest route. Uh, that's kind of open to interpretation or uh, opinion based, I suppose. Uh, the main thing that's going to shape your route, I, I think, is whether you're going to go to Sky Islands first or to Outskirts first. And we're going to go to Sky Islands, not because I think it's easier, but uh, because I think for new Hunter players, it's going to be easiest for some kind of technical reasons. Like, uh, you, you don't need as much intricate knowledge of how like scavengers work or anything like that. A lot of people get frustrated with scavengers. Um, and Sky Islands is more just kind of, you, you go in and it's skill-based, and if you're good enough, you can get through it. Uh, so if you've gone through Survivor uh, the normal way, the quote-unquote intended way, then uh, you probably recognize this area, or maybe you have some inkling. Uh, we're just going in reverse. Um, so we're going to see every area a little bit throughout this, uh, at least. Uh, I'm going to try and show you a little bit of everything. Uh, but farm arrays we're not going to see too much of, aside from this opening part. So I'll try to quickly go over everything notable about it, at least in this type of run. Um, when you start out, uh, you probably saw me going through, I mean, you don't really have much of a choice. You just go right, and uh, you end up in that room with the little baby centipedes. And you can eat those uh, without even killing them first and to fill up your food meter. It's, it's basically just free real estate. Uh, and they're small enough where they can't kill you, uh, whereas the ones I'm fighting right now uh, absolutely can kill you. If they're any bigger than the babies, then you need to kill them first or get around them or just whatever, uh, because they are lethal. And uh, they get bigger than this, although hopefully we won't be seeing any of those. Um, but that's uh, it, it's a good example of what I like to say is, in Hunter, everybody says, oh, you got to kill everything. you, you got to kill, and you got to kill to feed, and it's, it's really important. Whereas, actually, a lot of the same stuff that's available to Survivor that doesn't involve killing, and you can fill up your food meter with it, uh, is actually true of Hunter, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of things like bat flies and blue fruit only give one quarter pip. That's true. And those are common, and it would be nice if you could feed on them. I mean, you still can. There are situations where it's good to fill up on those if they're available. Uh, it can get you over the hump uh, in a pinch, but uh, typically you do want to be on the lookout for better sources. Uh, Hunter gets full food pips from, like, popcorn plants, uh, those little baby harmless animals, uh, like the egg bugs, those still give like a full pip per egg. So if you just kill one, you're set. Um, jellyfish is another thing uh, that gives you a full pip. And those are, I mean, they can sort of kill you, uh, but not if you're even the least bit careful. Uh, usually that little trek through farm arrays going to Sky Islands is not a big deal at all. Uh, there might be like one lizard or two. It seems like it's hard-coded uh, to never spawn vultures in that initial trek. I don't know if that's true, but 
in the beginning parts of Hunter, I've never had a vulture come down in that part of farm arrays. Uh, whereas usually, like, if you're in open air in Hunter, there's king vultures everywhere. Uh, but maybe, maybe not. Uh, you shouldn't have too big of a deal with it. it. It's like there's blue lizards, and sometimes they hang off the screen in those screens where uh, y you can go up and down, like when you're just about to get to Sky Islands, like where we just were. Uh, sometimes you'll get ambushed there, but if you kind of just wait around, they'll usually show themselves and you can pass. Um, you shouldn't need to kill anything because of those little centipedes uh, and farm arrays, so you can give yourself a little bit of a respite from that. Uh, and then you get to this first area, or it would be the last area uh, from how you remember it from Survivor. Uh, and these pole jumps aren't too bad. Um, when you get up here, uh, this is a good thing to remember where I, I jump up there and I just barely grab that little pole. Uh, it kind of looks like you, you might have to use the arrow tunnels on the right uh, and then do a, like a long pounce to get over, but you really don't have to. Um, and you can just jump right up and get to this transition. Uh, and sometimes you'll see these green centipedes here. I find that they're not that uh, aggressive. Um, and then you have the little noodle flies over there, which we should definitely talk about at some point. But let's just take a look at this uh, big long alleyway here in Sky Islands, which uh, this is like, I feel like when they were designing Hunter and Hunter spawns and everything, uh, they intended for this area to be kind of like a good snapshot of uh, what Hunter's all about. Because uh, you often get like maximum spawns in here, and, and there's so much interplay. There, you can see scavengers fighting with lizards here. Uh, there, there's drop wigs. Uh, sometimes there's centipedes. You can actually see a drop wig up there uh, with a little blue fruit hanging down. Um, so there, there's like so much interplay, which is both good and bad. I mean, sometimes they'll all go after you and then other times that they'll kind of get in each other's way and go for each other instead. Um, right here, you see like everybody stepping on each other kind of saved me there because I didn't have something to knock the vulture out. Uh, you do have to be careful of scavengers and hunter. Uh, scavengers don't start docile. Uh, in Hunter, like, like they do in Survivor, um, where, I mean, I'm sure you've had a scavenger in Survivor that just attacked you for no reason, uh, but that's more because of uh, just how they have individual differences among their race, um, not because they're inherently aggressive toward the Survivor, but with Hunter, they do actually start with negative reputation toward you. Um, but again, there is individual variance, so you might meet one that doesn't really care too much about you being there, but it's good to stay kind of low to the ground and try not acting too aggressive. Um, but you should be able to get through here. Uh, if you uh, have rested in that shelter uh, right inside Sky Islands or right outside of it, whichever, uh, then you might be able to feed in that hallway. Uh, especially if somebody has done the killing for you. Uh, but it's pretty easy to get like an advantageous attack off against one of those creatures and feed in that way. Uh, more about the noodle flies. Uh, be careful when you choose to feed on those because if you uh, kill either one of the, the babies or the mother, uh, they will just, the other mothers and fathers will just hunt you forever. And they can kill you if you've never tried to kill them before. Uh, but basically your goal really is to get uh, to this shelter here without dying, preferably. Uh, and that's not to say that dying is that big of a deal in Hunter. I want to stress that because I'm going to end this run with like somewhere between 20 and 30 deaths. And like you can... You can mess up in Hunter, and it's not that big of a deal overall, uh, as long as you know exactly what requirements you're going to run into as far as like Karma Gates and things like that. Um, you don't have to play perfectly, 
And I don't want people to be uh, afraid of the cycle limit uh, because it, it's it's really not as bad as people think. Uh, you don't use as many cycles as you think you do getting around the whole map. And uh, once you reach five pebbles, he's actually going to give us more cycles. So it, it's I really think that there's plenty of time. I know it feels bad. It's like playing Majora's Mask and you have that time limit hanging over your head. I know it seems like it sucks. Uh, but it is good if you can get to that shelter uh, and then have full karma because then you can visit this Echo and uh, he will upgrade your karma by two. The first Echo or five pebbles that you visit uh, will upgrade your karma by two and then each successive one increases it by one. But this gives you a lot of leeway to mess up in Sky Islands. Well, not a lot. Uh, if you're brand new, you may have to restart if you really have a lot of trouble with Sky Islands, which is okay. There are some messed up jumps uh, to do in certain parts of this. Not so much going this way, actually. I find that the jumps are actually more treacherous uh, going from Sky Islands to Farmer Rays. Uh, but they can still be kind of tricky. Uh, for newcomers. Um, and uh, just take note there, uh, when I was jumping up, um, I, I maybe I'm just weird, but I had trouble figuring out that you could get up and over that part there. Uh, when I was first starting out, I was going this whole crazy other way uh, when I first tried getting through Skylands as Hunter, and I, for some reason, it just didn't occur to me that I could get up and over there. You have to kind of do an awkward jump to get to that pole. And uh, sometimes the spears don't stick there if you're trying to use one to help yourself. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's cyan lizards, uh, which don't typically appear. I, I think you can probably lineage them as survivor, but they're mostly a hunter creature. And, uh, you know, a lot of people get scared of red lizards. And sure, they are kind of scary, like they'll, they'll mess you up if you uh, don't know what you're getting into. But cyans really are kind of like your worst enemy, I think, with Hunter, because they're everywhere. Red lizards only appear in like two places, and uh, they don't really always notice you all that much. But cyans are nasty, they, they jump everywhere, uh, they're unpredictable, they're, they can be hard to hit if they're in full flight. Um, I was lucky here and, uh, you know, w was able to get the jump on one of them and then the other one, I hit him once and he retreated. Uh, I think this is where I accidentally throw away the green neuron, actually, uh, or close to it. I actually did this run about three months ago from the time of this recording. Uh, I meant to do uh, a recap of it uh, at first when I first did this, but uh, just things got in the way of it. Uh, so I'm not remembering too much. Uh, but uh, here, this is definitely a place where uh, a lot of time you can get ambushed by some type of lizard. It's not always a white one. Sometimes there's a cyan in there. Um, but uh, that's, you know, unfortunate. But it, it's not the end of the world. You, you're going to either mess up a jump or there's going to be a lizard in a place where it, it really sucks. Um, as you can see, I'm holding on here uh, just because I don't think that I'm actually dead there. Uh, if you didn't know, if you get bit by a lizard and you only hear one of those like little drum beats and not two, it means you're, you're actually technically alive. Uh, once they get into their hideaway, then you're, you're actually dead, for real. But if the bite was lethal, you'll hear two drum beats, and then you'll know you're dead right away, in which case there's no point in hanging on. I'm not sure I had any instances where I, I got lucky and one of them set me free by like biting another lizard that had me in its mouth. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, Sky Islands definitely can be scary. Uh, if you watch speedruns of this game, a lot of time this is where, or like close to where, uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll go into farm arrays and they'll grab like a vulture grub and they'll just like lure a vulture out so that they can steal the mask. 
And if you can get a mask, it, it makes Hunter way easier because at the end of the day, um, having uh, at the end of the day, lizards are definitely your worst enemy in this whole game, all things considered. I mean, there might be parts where, like, uh, for example, like in Chimney Canopy, uh, you, you might have, uh, like, King Vultures just making your life miserable. But, like, all in all, if I could eliminate one enemy out of the game just to make my life easier, it would definitely be lizards, especially with cyans running around everywhere. Uh, cyans are actually scared of vulture masks, whereas red lizards and green lizards are not. So the the weakest and stupidest lizard and then the biggest, strongest, and also kind of stupid lizard uh, are not affected by vulture masks. Uh, it also, like, confers a little bit of scavenger respect to you. It, it might just be the King Vulture Masks. It's kind of dicey, like you can't really rely on that. The nice thing about going for the route through that goes through outskirts in farm arrays is although you have to go uh, through two scavenger tolls or maybe just one depending on if you take like a really roundabout route, uh, you the last hole that's right on the edge of outskirts I find a lot of times when I go in there uh, there is oftentimes like a, a vulture doing battle with the scavengers there and I can steal a mask that way that's happened to me more than once so I kind of like going that way it's also nice because you can build up scavenger rep and then they'll be nicer to you throughout your run especially in places like subterranean where they can really mess with stuff um, I actually fared a lot better than I usually do against cyan lizards in this run, although uh, not all of these cycles were successful. But as you can see, if you can kill like a vicious predator, they, they do give a lot of food pips. It's just that if you're savvy and you know the map really well, uh, you don't always need to kill in this. Um, if you want a high score, then yeah, you should be killing. But if you just want to beat it first, like if you just want to get through it, then I think this tutorial is for you. See, so there's where uh, I threw the green neuron away. And uh, I spent a while looking for it because I didn't realize what had happened at first. And after I had gotten away from this lizard, I I'm like looking around for it. Uh, we should talk about Hunter's inventory uh, during this time since there's not going to be much of note to talk about anyway. Uh, so he starts with the green neuron, uh, and he has the aquamarine pearl in his stomach, and Hunter can carry an extra spear on his back. You might know this already, but uh, let's talk more about the neuron. So neuron, uh, the green neuron revives Lich to the Moon, which is the entire point of Hunter. The hunter was designed by whatever his name is, no significant harassment or whatever iterator that is, uh, to deliver that neuron. Like that's your purpose. A lot of people think, oh well, it's just like the other modes. You just have to ascend. Uh, and yeah, the game ends when you ascend, and you you get like an extra point bonus for it. But that's not really what hunter is actually about. Hunter is meant to revive looks to the moon. Um, so the green neuron, uh, it has this special property where if you accidentally throw it away and like not off a cliff, it will kind of glow for a while. So it's really easy to see, like if you have to throw it away to like do a battle or something like that, uh, you can do that and it'll still be there and visible when, when you're done. Uh, it won't persist across cycles as far as I know. Like I've tried to leave it for another cycle and then it was just gone one time in one of my runs. Uh, but you can leave it during a cycle and come back for it. Uh, but if you throw it away, it's it's gone forever. And I, I eventually had to quit out of this cycle. Um, but the aquamarine pearl is in Hunter's stomach. And it, it's, it actually doesn't count for anything point-wise. You, you don't really get any bonus for bringing it to Looks to the Moon and having her read it. 
uh, it's just like a lore bonus. Like you, it's one of those its own reward type things. So if you don't care about that, or like you've already looked up the dialogue, or like you're just in a, like a really bad situation, and you need to barter a pearl, then you can do that. Um, it's just like anything else. Um, and it, it's actually quite helpful if you're going to the outskirts from farm arrays because uh, it's not always easy to find a pearl for the like one or two tolls you're going to encounter, probably two if you're going the easier route. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I know that scavengers aren't fun all the time in this game, especially in like a fresh hunter save, but honestly, like you really don't want to resort to killing unless like you're really good at the combat in this game. And if you are good at the combat, then like you probably don't need to be watching this. Right. Um, but if you make friendly with them, uh, they might actually help you later on. And, uh, depending on which route you're going, like if you're going like full for full subterranean, like you're going from beginning to end from like the farmer race side, chances are you're going to run into some and, uh, Hunter Subterranean can be long and grueling. Uh, it's Subterranean is very random. There's always like, it's like that area I was talking about here in Sky Islands near the beginning where there's like so many things interacting with one another. It, it's like that, but 10,000 times more, uh, as you probably know, because it can be that way on Survivor as well, but it's just absolute chaos as Hunter, and if you have like one ally, or at least like something that's neutral toward you that would otherwise be hostile, it makes it so much easier. But uh, we're actually going to go the drainage system route when we want to ascend in this, which I think, honestly, like a, a lot of people get stuck in drainage system, and they think, oh, it, it's like, you know, such a difficult and pain in the ass route. Uh, it, it's the worst area, I'll never go there. But uh, the way that you go from outskirts to drainage system to subterranean doesn't actually involve too many of the, like, long swimming sections. And there's not that many enemies in drainage system, even as Hunter. Uh, there are some areas that really aren't all that different, honestly, as Hunter. Uh, this is not one of them. This area is, is way worse as Hunter. Um, I wouldn't say it's the worst area in the game. That would definitely be exterior. Uh, that's the another area that we're not going to see too much of because honestly, like uh, hunter exterior is vicious. Uh, specifically, like the leg and the underhang. Um, I, I have a video here on my channel actually of myself going from the five pebbles end of underhang all the way through the underhang uh, to the, uh, what is it called, the wall from the bottom and then going to the top and then going to the other end of Five Pebbles all in one cycle. And if you go look at that video, you can see kind of what the underhang is like. Uh, I had a vulture mask in that video and uh, it, it like I didn't get really bad spawns in, in that cycle. So it, it's not fully representative, and there's like other nasty things in the leg, like spitter spiders and like more daddy long legs. But it's just, I wouldn't recommend going the traditional route uh, through like memory crypts and then coming out in the leg as hunter as like your first ever run. I, I really would recommend that you uh, go something resembling what we're doing here and come out at the bottom of the wall. This is probably a good time to talk about long jumps or like pouncing, or I, I think there's like a more accepted name for it, but it's just when you crouch down and you hold the jump button and, until uh, Slugcat kind of arches his back and then you can jump across long distances, uh, like how I just did there. So it's like I just said, you face a certain way, you make sure you're in the proper facing and uh, you hold the jump button and you'll see like a little like wiggle on Slugcat's back. Like he kind of just like wiggles his back a little bit. And uh, at that point you uh, keep holding like a, a certain direction 
uh, whether it's in that case it would be right, uh, and then you release the jump button and he will perform a longer jump than he normally would if you were just jumping regularly across the gap. And if you throw an object in midair, as long as it has like some mass to it, like a rock or a spear, I don't think it works with things like neurons, uh, then you can actually boost your momentum as you go across the gap. And you need to do that in order to get across certain areas. Or you just need to get higher up, but that's not always possible. Um, and in, in Sky Islands, it's more imperative than anywhere else. Uh, it wasn't a great example back there because I died trying to make one of those jumps, uh, but we will definitely succeed. Um, it, it's more about Hunter's inventory. Uh, if you're going for all objectives, then having Hunter's hands full kind of sucks in parts like this uh, because you, you definitely want like maybe two pieces of rubble just to make sure you can get across gaps. I usually try and throw something even if I, I'm like 99% sure I can make it with just a regular jump. Uh, just uh, it's a good practice, I think. Uh, but uh, more about Hunter's objectives. So uh, as I said, you have to bring the neuron to looks to the moon. That's one objective. Ascending is another objective. Uh, but there's actually a third objective that isn't always that well understood by players. Uh, it's bringing the green neuron to five pebbles. Uh, before bringing it to moon. Um, it, it's in the score screen, it says like helped five pebbles. I'm not really sure how it helps him because uh, when you bring it to him, he like picks it up and like makes some remarks about it. But uh, I don't know, maybe like the schematics on it or whatever give him like ideas or something. I, I don't know. Uh, but if you don't bring it to him, like if you throw it away or if you visit moon first, uh, he remarks on that as well. He says, well, it's my camera has said that you showed that you were carrying something when you came in. It doesn't seem like you have it anymore. So he kind of hints at uh, what you need to do to get top scores in this. So if you basically, if you want to do everything in a hunter run, uh, you have to go to five pebbles first, basically, before you go to looks to the moon. Uh, and show him the green neuron, and then you can go to looks to the moon, give her that, and that frees up your hand. Uh, now, one thing you can do to make it better is if you uh, like either don't care about the pearl, or say you want to barter it uh, when you're still in, like going to outskirts, for example, um, you can just put the green neuron in your stomach instead, and that makes things easier. Uh, but the way that the green neuron is like so much more visible than most other objects kind of makes it better for just having it in your hands. Um, this is kind of something that you would have to just feel out for yourself. Because I think if you're holding like the pearl in your hands, for example, and it's like kind of a dull color, it's easier to lose track of. And like, say if you're climbing a pole and it's like not apparent, like what's in which hand really, it's, it's just that much harder to see, I think. Um, so uh, these days I, I like to keep the green neuron in my hand if I'm going for all objectives, but that's just something to think about. Um, it, it really does suck, honestly, having like uh, one of your hands tied up for like most of the run. Um, but if you're going for score or if you just kind of want to do like a, like a real hunter run where, where you like do all the story things and everything, um, then it's just something you have to deal with. Uh, I, I think I, I went for all objectives in this run just because I think like most of the people who need help with hunter runs are the kind of people who are probably completionists. Like they feel like they have to do everything perfectly and uh, you really don't. Like, honestly, in, in a lot of ways, I would recommend that you actually try just doing, like, a halfway hunter run first. Like, say, where you, you take this route, and you just maybe go to Five Pebbles, and you visit all of the Echoes along the way. Uh, so far, we've seen uh, one Echo. 
and, uh, you know, just like feel it out, uh, do like one objective, which is probably going to be ascend because th that's what you're familiar with. That's what you probably associate with like a completed run. And, uh, I think that is like a good milestone to shoot for, um, going along this sky islands to, uh, five pedals route and then back if you go like straight back to five uh not five pebbles uh farm arrays and then you go to subterranean from there you actually hit enough echoes along the way if you haven't died like way way too much um it, it's easy enough to grab that first one like we did and then uh if you happen to get up to chimney canopy with like full karma intact then you you could visit one there and then uh, Five Pebbles and the Echo that's right next to him don't have like any karma requirements, so that's good. And then uh, on the way back, when you hit Chimney Canopy again, uh, you can hit that Echo if you missed it before. And you, you probably will have like max or close to max karma like going back down the wall since that's easier. Um, so you can just, you can actually like get done with a Hunter Run pretty quickly that way um because like uh i don't know if you've ever looked at like speedrun leaderboards or anything but like uh hunter is actually like the fastest route just because he starts in farm arrays um so you, you can like get through the game traversing much less of the world i mean this is like skips and glitches aside uh but like if you're just doing like a normal run where you, you do everything legitimately and you get your karma up to max. Hunter is actually the fastest. And, uh, you know, that way, if you set like a small goal for yourself like that, uh, then you can work your way up to, um, doing more. And then eventually, like, if you want, you can just kill stuff indiscriminately for points. Um, don't worry too much about getting points. Uh, and until you have some hunter runs under your belt, I would say. Uh, it's fun, but if you try to tackle like red creatures immediately, you're probably going to have a bad time. Uh, something else we should talk about that uh, I made a mental note of earlier was uh, the starvation tactics. Um, so let's say you get to that one shelter that we went to just before we visited the Sky Islands Echo. Um, so that's like, it's more or less like two shelters worth of traversing to get there. Like it's, you can get there in one cycle, honestly, from the beginning of Hunter. Um, but I, I think like a good goal to set is to like get there. And then like, once you hit that shelter in Sky Islands, then you have max karma and you can just backtrack a little bit for that Echo like we did. But something you can actually do is uh, you can get there in one cycle and then you can starve yourself and rest in that shelter again. And that increases your karma. So you can visit the echo. You can go back and visit the echo. And it's nice because like when an echo is present, it pacifies all the creatures like within like a few screens. Uh, not always. Like sometimes I've had vultures still try to kill me even when that's happening. So just be aware of that. Um, but then, uh, once you visited that echo while you're starving, uh, you will, you know, like go back in time or, or whatever it is, and you'll be back at your cycle when you weren't starving anymore. So it's, it's kind of like free in a way. Uh, but I didn't do that here because it, it's kind of, it's the sort of thing where you, you can like kind of mess up if you don't really know what you're doing. And like, Depending on who you ask, it's like maybe arguably cheating, sort of. Um, although I, I, I don't really think that it breaks any rules per se. It's, it's not like using that glitch where you like, uh, you know, like skip guardians by like having something in your stomach and then quickly transitioning or whatever. Uh, it's not like that. Like I, I use starvation tactics sometimes, but I didn't hear because it's just kind of like uh, I would have had to explain it, which. I guess I did anyway, so uh, never mind. Uh, that's something you can do if you want, but it's it's not always useful. It's it's like not something that you you always like will need to do. Like there's not that many echoes in the game, so it's not like 
you're constantly going to be at some juncture where like you're like oh I, I should starve here it's just it's it's kind of niche in its application I think um, something that I've said before uh, which is relevant right now actually is that uh, so sometimes people think of this game as being like Oh, monk is easy mode, survivor is normal mode, and hunter is hard mode, and that that's like true for the most part. But there are some situations where it's a little more complicated than that. So, like right here, when I first entered this area that I'm in right now, uh, there were or like lizards over on the other side. So, like you know, I probably would have had to wait them out or like thrown stuff at them. Uh, but vultures came down at the same time and scared the lizard away and that's something that can happen that can like benefit you in harder difficulties in this game so it's it's better to look at the bright side of things when you're playing like say if you've only played monk and you, you want to try playing survivor or if you've only played survivor and you want to try and play hunter uh, you don't have to be pessimistic about it like I know hunter is difficult definitely but you can do it and uh, there are ways that you can take advantage of it um, a lot of times I find what happens in the easier difficulties is because of the low spawns there will only be like one creature and so that creature has all of its attention focused on me and there's just nothing you can really do about it like you can either kill the creature or you can wait it out, or you can try and get around, but that's not always an option. Whereas with Hunter, it's like sometimes you can take advantage of the chaos. So you should look out for those kinds of situations as you go. But uh, you know, one, once you get to this part of uh, Sky Islands here, um, it's it's pretty much smooth sailing. Uh, you, you're almost into Chimney Canopy, uh, unless you do something like that. Uh, and you know that can happen. It's sort of like when you're going into the leg for the first time from memory crypts uh, And you know your, your eyes are tired from looking at all the dark screens and memory crypts and you, you just you, you see a shelter and you just kind of run across and it's like whoops. Well, I got careless and uh, that, that can happen anywhere really it can happen here um, Yeah, do take note that uh, Squid Kata are one of the, like, quote, easier, unquote, uh, food sources in this. Uh, as far as I remember, they are reputation-based. So, like, they'll do their little thing where they, like, try and bump into you some more. Like, if you start killing their kind, like I am here. But it's not as bad as it is with, like, the noodle flies or, or whatever they're called. Um, I mean, they, they can't actively kill you if you're careful and you just, you know, wage complete war on them, then, you know, that that's good, I think. Uh, but um, this is uh, another thing that I want to talk about is I, I'm actually a little bit like karma farming here. And you might be thinking, well, but Hunter has a time limit. You, you can't do that. You don't have time for that. But you actually do. I mean, you can't do it like excessively. I mean, you can't spend like a hundred cycles in Hunter and succeed. Uh, but you, you can like, you know, if you if you made it quite a bit through it, and uh, you, you you just need like an extra bit of karma to get through a gate, like I do here, you, you can you can rest and just like make uh, ostensibly no progress and just get your karma back up if you want. In point of fact, like, uh, in your first hunter runs, I would say just see how far you can get. Like, go into a run and not necessarily, like, think, okay, I'm going to get to the end in this run. I'm, I'm going to do it this time. It's okay to have, like, a failure of a run. Uh, hunter also, like, as opposed to survivor or monk, uh, even if you fail, it'll still give you a score screen at the end. So, like, honestly, that's satisfying. Like, you, you can still get something out of a hunter run without really accomplishing anything that you set out to do. You know, as, as long as you've been, you know, killing some creatures, you, you can... And uh, if you get some of the achievement-related 
feats under your belt as you go, uh, then you, you'll get like some points at the end, uh, minus your deaths and stuff like that. Um, so it's just like, don't go into Hunter thinking you're going to do everything perfectly because you're not. It, it's going to be, it's, it's another tier of difficulty and you're going to have to get used to it and you're going to have to adjust and you're going to have to maybe even let it beat you at first. You're going to have to learn some new skills, uh, which hopefully I'm going to teach you a little bit about. You're going to have to think of more creative ways to use spear platforms like I did there. Um, I mean, Hunter can hold two of them. I would say use them liberally in that way. Uh, there will be some times where you'll be like, oh, I wish I hadn't wasted that spear because I, I really need a platform here. But, you know, those situations, I, I mean, look at this screen right here. There's like two in my inventory and there was another one on that ledge there and you'll, you'll get a feel for what areas uh are going to spawn more uh like you know this long stretch here usually has like at least a couple i, I can see one on the lower tier there and i'm sure there's going to be more coming up ahead when we come back, we will deal with chimney canopy in both directions, as well as the wall and five pebbles. Thanks for watching.